Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.16 The Nether Update has been released. This one brings functionality for the smithing table, new sound backgrounds for the nether biomes, as well as some new blocks and other changes. My name is Sliced Lime, I'm here to take you on a guided tour through everything changed in this version. Starting with blocks and items. There are new types of the nether wood-like blocks. They are crimson and warped hi-fi. These are the blocks that would normally be called wood for the log types. They are called hi-fi for the stem types. And they also include stripped variations crafted the same way as you would if you had logs. And you can also craft the stripped ones directly from stripped logs. There's a new use for the smithing table. You now use that to fuse netherite ingots with a diamond tool or weapon or armor. When you do so, the diamond item turns into a netherite item, keeping its current damage and all of its other properties, like its name and its enchantments. The previous temporary crafting recipes for netherite items have been removed. Speaking of netherite, if you dropped a netherite tool or armor into lava, it would show a burning animation and sound like if it was burning. That has been fixed in this version. Hoes have been changed in this version. They are now considered digging tools, just like axes, shovels, and pickaxes. That means that higher tiers of hoes will dig out blocks faster, just like a diamond pickaxe is faster than an iron pickaxe. This also means that they are enchantable. They can now get efficiency, silk touch, and fortune enchants. And that can be done either through books on an anvil, but those enchants are also now possible to get directly on the hoe inside of an enchanting table. Hoes are now the right tool for a new type of block in addition to the nether wart blocks and the warped wart blocks from the previous snapshot. They are now the right tool for hay bales as well. Ladders and tripwire hooks can now be placed on the side of redstone blocks, observers, and target blocks. And the target blocks have been fixed so that when moved by pistons they will properly update their signal strength. The target block has also been changed, it is now flammable. And speaking of fire, fire blocks now have an actual hitbox, shape, and breaking particles. Let's move on to mobs and let's start in the oceans. Non-persistent fish will now despawn closer to the player. You can never see fish more than 64 blocks away, but they would remain on the server until 128 blocks away. That has been changed so they will now actually despawn when 64 blocks away from the closest player. Do note that this applies to non-persistent fish, that is, fish that have not been named and have never been caught in a bucket. Other ocean fixes, a number of dolphin bugs have been fixed, among them one where dolphins would suddenly move extremely fast when near a boat. And dolphins would swim alongside boats even if there was a non-player entity riding the boat. Angry dolphins would still give the player that they are angry at, the dolphin's grace buff. Let's move on into the nether, shall we? There was a problem with the piglin bartering loot table that had an extra function in it causing the intended amount of items to not apply. The bartering loot itself has also been changed. The percentages of how common items are have been tweaked and some of the items have been changed in the tables. For common loots, these are now about 10% chance to get and changes of the items here are that shroom lights and warped fungi have been removed and soul sand have been added. That means that you will commonly now get 1 to 5 fire charges, 8 to 16 gravel, 4 to 10 leather, 4 to 16 nether bricks, 1 obsidian, 1 to 3 crying obsidian, or 4 to 16 soul sand. For uncommon items, there's no change to the item set itself here, and the chance to get these items is now about 5%. These now include 8 to 16 quartz, 5 to 12 glowstone dusts, 2 to 6 magma creams, 4 to 8 ender pearls, or 8 to 24 string. In the rare category, these are about 2% chance to get. Warped nylium has been removed, and instead you can now get a bunch of iron nuggets. This lands us with 9 to 36 iron nuggets, 1 potion of fire resistance, or 1 splash potion of fire resistance. And the very rare category has no change to the items, but it is now even more rare. The chance is now 1 out of 411. The item you can get is 1 netherite hoe. 
More piglin bug fixes. If you attacked a baby piglin, then the adult piglins around would not get angry. That has been fixed in this version. Their zombification progress wasn't saved, which meant that if you logged out of your world and then back in, the piglins would not zombify when they should. If you made a left-handed piglin, then their admiring animation when looking at a gold ingot would be broken. In this version, piglins can never be left-handed. Wither skeletons will now target and attack piglins, just like piglins will target and attack wither skeletons. For world generation fixes, we have a bunch of structures in villages that have been fixed. Small bugs with individual blocks in various structures. We also have a fix for soul sand valley fossils that could be generated in the air that is fixed in this version. For visual changes, the textures of the netherite items have been changed. The crying obsidian now has its original ancient texture inside of the programmer art resource pack. A bug fix has been done to corner quartz stairs that now has the border they should have. Warp fungus and crimson root item forms had some inconsistencies that have been fixed, and piglins wearing netherite helmets or enchanted helmets had some sea fighting going on on their noses that has been fixed. Sound changes in this version. New ambient sounds have been added for all of the various nether biomes. There are different soundscapes for each biome. Let's start with the nether wastes. In Crimson Forests. Warped Forests. And in the Soul Sand Valleys. There are also a bunch of technical changes in this version. Let's start with the commands and NBT changes. Item frames now have two new tags. One is invisible, which when set to non-zero makes the item frame invisible. And fixed, making the item frame unable to be broken even if the supporting block is removed. And the item inside cannot be removed anymore. Do note that turning the item is still possible. Unique IDs of the owners of projectiles such as arrows or snowballs are now all stored in a new format. That format is an array of four integers. This means that all projectiles now store their information the same way, and in the future, all unique IDs will be stored in this format. Since this is an integer array, that means that using commands, you can now copy parts of a unique ID into a scoreboard value. Finally, a bug fix. Piglins with no AI set would still shake in the overworld that has been fixed in this snapshot. For tags, we have two new block tags added in this version. They are hoglin underscore repellent and piglin underscore repellent, and they list the block types that scare those respective mob types. Advancement triggers have been changed as well. The target underscore hit advancement trigger type added in the previous version has had its conditions changed. There is now a signal underscore strength condition that was called signal strength with a capital S in the previous version. There's now also two new conditions for projectile which matches the projectile entity itself and shooter which matches the player who shot or threw that projectile. Block model definitions in the default resource pack has been changed with a bunch of the block models now using templates. These new templates include templates for anvils, 
chorus flowers, command blocks, daylight detectors, turtle eggs at a count of 1, 2, 3 or 4, sea grass, blocks with just a single face, and flower pots where tinting is applied. In addition to this, a couple of text fixes in this version and a stability fix for a serialization error that meant that the operators list and the whitelist of servers became broken. Those were all the changes in this version. If you want to try this version, then remember that snapshots are less well tested. And if you do upgrade a world to this version, you can never downgrade it to a previous release again. If you want to try it out, but you don't know how to, then click on the card on the video right now. That'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. And that was all for me for this time. I hope you found this update video useful, and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to this channel where I make update videos for every single new snapshot, pre-release or release of Minecraft. And don't forget to hit the bell icon, select all to get notified when the videos are out. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.